Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10, and we will be coming from the Living Bible. All oh, have to say, amen. All right, hey, yeah, yeah, y'all are here too. Y'all can say amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk back to me. Come on. <laughs> and the Bible reads When Jesus had finished his sermon and went back into the city of Catherine, just at that time, the highly prized slave of a Roman army captain was sick and near death. When the captain heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they began pleading earnestly with Jesus to come with them and help the man. They told him what a wonderful person the captain was. If anyone deserves your help, it is he, they said, for he loves the Jews and even paid personally to build us a synagogue. Jesus went with them. But just before arriving at the house, the captain sent some friends to say, Sir, don't inconvenience yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such honor or even to come and meet you. Just speak a word, I believe New King James Version said, just say the word yeah. from where you are, and my servant boy will be healed. I know because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my men. I only need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come, and to my slave, do this or that, and he does it. So just say, be healed, and my servant will be well again. Verse 9, Jesus was amazed. Turning to the crowd, he said, never among all the Jews in Israel have I met a man with faith like this. And when the captain's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. If I may speak to you from the topic of let the word do the work. Yeah. Let the word do the work. You may be seated. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be a supper of thy glory for my shelf and my redeemer. Amen. This scripture in Luke chapter 7, uh, an event that had taken place, teaches us a very important lesson. It teaches us how the supernatural, how the natural world and the supernatural world together bring about people, miracles, and people's lives. As you may be familiar with the book of Luke, uh, it demonstrates the number of miracles that have taken place. Jesus said in verse number nine that I haven't seen faith like this. The type of faith that this man had, it surprised Jesus. And I want you to understand on this morning that it wasn't the quantity of the man's faith that surprised Jesus, but it was the man's knowledge of how authority operates. The man understood authority. He lived his entire life both subject to authority and also had one who had authority over others. Mm -hmm. And so he put it this way. He said, Lord, just say the word yeah. from where you are and my servant will be healed. Uh, there's a very known group here in town at the Northside Church of Christ. They go by the name of Total Praise. Uh -huh. And they sang this song, Just Say the Word. Uh, it was written by Sylvia Rose around 1987. If you don't know who Sylvia Rose is, uh, she's written songs such as Mansion, Robe, and Crown and, yeah. and All My Trials. And, and the list goes on. But the song says, Lord, I told on your great power. Uh -huh. How many of you told somebody about how good yeah. God's been to you? Yeah, yeah. He says, and I have reason to believe that it is. It is true. Not only you know how good God's been to you, but you know it is true because you've seen him work for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It goes on to say, I know there's nothing to bid for you to conquer. Not only is he good, but he yeah. can move mountains for you if you just give yeah. him a chance. Yeah. He yeah. says, and there is nothing in this world you cannot do. Nothing is too big or too small for God. And, and, and I can hear Sister Renee Richardson say, so God. Yeah. He says, I stand here on your promise that if I ask in faith that you will hear my prayer, whatever you stand in the need of, whatever you need to be done, whatever you cannot do on your own, know that God is here for you. He said, Jesus, you don't even have to come to my house. Just say the word or let the word do the work. He says, Jesus, I know your word has power. He says, Jesus, I know your word has authority. Uh, the man says uh, to Jesus at your physical location, whether you are here 
or whether you're at my house has nothing to do with whether or not my servant is going to be healed. Amen. But it has to do yeah. with the power and the authority yeah. that is in your word. Amen. Amen. So the man also knew what it meant when something is subject to a, a, a higher power. Uh -huh. He knew that the sickness that was on his servant was subject to the words that Jesus spoke. And here's why reading the word of God is so important because God's word has power. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 3 says, Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God so that these things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The stuff you see, he said, were not made of the things that you can see. The natural was made by the supernatural, and the visible was made by the invisible. And the Roman officer understood enough of this to be able to say, look, Jesus, you don't have to explain anything to me. All right, all right. I know that your words and, and the power of your words created everything that there is. Uh -huh. And it is all subject to you and your words. So, Lord, you don't have to go out your way to bless me because, first of all, I don't even deserve it. All I ask is that you just say the word or just let your word do the work and my servant will be healed. Mm -hmm. So we see that the man, he understood authority. Yeah. And he understood that everything in the natural world was subject to the one who created it all of not, out of nothing from the supernatural world. All right. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verses 26, the Bible says, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Very familiar passage that we know in Genesis chapter 1 and, and verse 1. You, as Brother Brown said, if you hadn't torn out your Bible, it's the very first verse that you see if you just open your Bible. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens uh -huh. and the earth. It says that he created everything. He created it all. And because he created it all, Jesus Christ was the image of the invaluable God. Jesus Christ manifest in the flesh had the power to walk on water in the midst of a storm. Yes, he is the same God who told the storm peace. Be still. He was the same God who turned water into wine. He was the same God who healed all matter of sickness that the Bible says. He performed miracles. He died for me and you. But best of all, it says that he died on a Friday evening. He stayed in the grave all Friday night. Uh, they woke up Saturday morning. And he was still in the grave all day Saturday. But early, I don't know what time it was, but it says early Sunday morning. Just before the break of day, yes, before the roosters went cock a doo do, he rose with all power in his hand. The same power that woke you up this morning. The same power that put you in the right state of mind. The same power that healed your body. The same power who allowed you to put one foot in front of the other. That was the God who created everything. He says, you just name it. He was able to heal. And here's why he was able to heal and it's only because there was nothing that was above his authority. Yeah. Right. That's right. In fact, it was all beneath his authority because it was all a part of his creation. So when he spoke, everything had nothing to do but to just obey. Yes, sir. We see in Matthew chapter 8, there was a man who was full of 6,000 demonic spirits. Oh, talk to him. And it took from Jesus just to say one word. And that one word was go. Uh -huh. And those demons went streaming into a herd of pigs. Yeah, right, right. And you might say to me, JB, I, I don't believe you know that. Those are fables. Those are just stories. And my response to you will probably uh, be that when you, uh, your prayers are probably not being answered because uh -huh. you don't have enough faith in the word of God. See, when you have faith in the word of God, you can believe what it says. Yes, See, unlike man will tell you that he or she would do something and may not follow through, but you can best believe that if God said it, then he would do it. There's another song I believe Northside said. It says, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. It says, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. And they shout out, he's able. Somebody ought to shout, he's able. Uh, he's able to make you uh, a way out of no way for you. When you want to give up and you're feeling all alone, he's able. When you, when you don't know where your next meal is going to come from, just remember that he's able. When you don't feel like going to work, just remember that he's able. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, and verse number 20, it says God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all 
Somebody say all. Oh, Above oh, all, oh, oh. you can ask or think according to his power. All you need to do is believe in his word and believe that what it says can heal your body. Yes, sir. <clears throat> You're preaching. Believe that it can comfort your heart mm -hmm. when the rest of the world is freaking out. His word has authority over this natural world because it was the same word that spoke everything that there is into existence in the first place. We got many people out here who are worried about this virus. Uh, a virus that is part of this natural habit curse world. And as such, it is subject to the word of God. And this is why it's important to know the scripture and have it memorized in your heart. Listen to what he says uh, to you today on, on in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3. He says, but the Lord is faithful. Yes. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Yes. In yes. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous. Do yes. not be afraid or terrified because of them. Yes. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse number 14, he says, heal me, O Lord, I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. David said it best in, in Psalm chapter 119 and verse 11, thou word. Have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Uh, continue to read in Psalm chapter 5, verse 11. He says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. I thought y'all would have been shouting by now, but I just keep going until I, I get something. In Psalm chapter 46, verse 1, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 10, I'm sorry, chapter 41, verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Yes. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Yes. I will strengthen thee. Yes. Yeah, I will help thee. Yes. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Can I encourage you on this morning? Somebody Amen. ought to speak a word over your family on this morning. Somebody ought to speak a word over your community this morning. Speak a word over your finances, over that promotion that you've been waiting for. Peace in your life. Wherever it is that you may be in life right now, you ought to speak a word and give God some praise on this morning. Remember, remember God's authority. It's not, it's, it's, it's all of God's authority. It's not our authority. We may only have a little bit of faith, and I'm here to tell you, church, that's all that it takes. Amen. You might say, I would like to have a lot of faith, but if I'm honest with myself and I admit there are times I only have a little bit of faith, and I would tell you that's all that it would take. The scripture says, all you need is faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Yes. Yes. Uh, the following scriptures I'm going to give is talking about prayer. In Matthew chapter 18 and, and verse number 18, he says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth on. shall be bound in heaven. All right. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth yeah. as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. In James chapter 5 and, and verse number 16, he says, Pray for one another yeah. that ye may be healed. Right. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. What we need in churches, we need. Uh, some people uh, that pray like they never prayed before. Oh, well, we, we need some people to pray like our grandparents and great grandparents and our parents prayed back in the day when they ain't had no AC in the church, Brother Brown. Uh, when they had the funeral home fans, it's a kind of, you can't get a remember that? Uh, when you had the hard wood seats uh, with no cushion. We, 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 we need to pray like the old deacon used to do on Usher Board number two. Uh, uh, I can hear him and he said, Whoa, Lord, I come to you. I come to you. Yeah. Bow head, bend your body, yeah. Y'all know them type of prayers. Them the type of prayers that we need uh, on this morning. We, we need somebody who's going to get down with the Lord and, 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 and that's going to give us a good prayer. And, and for those who may be watching us on Zoom, you may say, I, I, I don't know how to pray. Well, let me teach you how to pray on this morning. All you just need to say is, Lord Jesus, uh, right now, can, can I do it in my Baptist voice? Let, let, let me see if I can do it in my Baptist voice. Lord Jesus. Hey, hey. Right now, 
He says, I give my heart to you. And I'm asking for your help. And you just tell the Lord what you need. And that's your prayer on this morning. Don't forget 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What's that key word, Brother Brown? Then, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. What we need to do is we need to put prayer back into our government. We need to pray for our government officials. As a matter of fact, parents, this is the perfect time for you to add prayer back into the classroom. Because our students are being homeschooled at this time. Parents, they can't tell you that you can't have God in your house. So why not start the child off right now? As Proverbs 22 and verse 6 tells us to train a child up in the way that he should go. Let's add some prayer uh, back in our school. We need prayer over our finances. We need prayer over this pandemic that we're going through. We need prayer for our family and our friends, for our church. We need prayer for our church leaders, for your pastors. For your ministers, but most of all, we need prayer for our state of mind. Lord, if there's ever a time that we need you, the time is right now. God is our help, He's our refuge, He's our strength. Much of this nation is scared to death right now, and, and that's because they don't have His word in their hearts. See, when you push God away, you're pushing His healing away. You're pushing his protection away. You push his blessings away. But as I mentioned, just remember Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. As I get ready to um, close, amen. Hey, man, I'm going to take my time on this one. Uh, we all familiar with the story of David and Goliath. Uh, a little boy versus big giant. You know the story. The kid throws a rock and kills the giant. Yeah. God enemies are destroyed. And God shows uh, it just takes someone having enough faith to look the giant in the eye and say, and say giant or say corona, yeah. you're not crossing this line today, buddy. Uh, this is my house. Uh, this is my family. These are my family and my neighbors. It belongs to me. He put my name on it. It's my joy. I wish y'all shot. It's my peace. It's, it's my anointing. It's my abundance. It's my prosperity. This is my nation and this pandemic that has been unleashed on our nations. We come against it in the name of the Lord of hosts. Where have you at right now? I want you to Close your eyes and pray with me. So we get ready to close and, and, and just say these words in your heart. Corona, Corona. devil, yeah. problem, giant, whatever it is, you may be big, mm -hmm. you may be ugly, yeah. you may be scary, yes, but my God is bigger. Yeah. His word is stronger. Yes, you have no authority in my family. Yeah. You have no authority in my body. You have no authority in my community. I'm stopping you right here, right now. Don't come in the closet because I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, just say in Jesus' name, wherever you are, amen. And if you want to continue to pray, if you want to continue to pray, you just keep on praying. Claim healing for your family. Claim healing for those in the hospitals right now. Claim healing for those in other nations who are suffering right now. Let's pray and believe God will give the scientists, will give the doctors, will give the nurses and our governments supernatural strength and the wisdom to defeat this thing that we have before us. As the songwriter says, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. But most importantly, don't give up on God. I know your situation may not be the best situation that you want to be in right now. But just remember what you're going through right now is a test so that you can just have a testimony on the other end. See, God is not going to take you out of something bad and put you in something worse. Uh, uh, he, he, he knows what it is that he has for you. And he knows exactly where he wants you to be in life. But sometimes we got to go through a test. We got to be able to pray to God and just ask God what we stand in the need of prayer of. 
But when we go to God, don't tell God how to bless you. God don't need you to check it up on him every uh, 30 days to try to get a follow-up. Once you say your prayer to God, let the man do his word. Let the word do his word. We don't deserve his grace and his mercy that he gives us. And as they realize in the book of Luke, all they just needed for him to do is just say the word. Uh, he says that I, I know that I'm not worthy for you to be here right now, God. You're not even, I'm not even worthy enough for you to, to, to come to my house. But all I need for you to do is just say the word. I just know that your word has power. That your word has authority. I just pray that whatever it is that you may be going through on this morning, I pray that you allow God's word and his power and his authority to just intercede in your life at this time. If you would, just please stand with me, whether you're at home or you're here in the building. And I just want you to close your eyes. And I want you to use a time like this, Philip, if y'all can give me something. And, and, and just use this opportunity to just reflect on the things that God has done for you. Use this time right now to pray to him, whatever it is you may be standing in need of prayer of. Our nation is hurting right now. We have this coronavirus that have taken some lives of those that we know. We understand that some people are out of work at this time. We understand that it has put a strain on some families at this time. But Lord, I declare and decree on this morning that you bless every family that is under the sound of my voice. House by house, they have no father. Pass me not, Savior. <laughs> if you'd like to be added to the body of Christ, although we are here, through our Facebook Live, through our Zoom, you can still be added to the body of Christ. God said he has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. You can be baptized into the water grave of baptism, and all your sins can be washed away. But you got to allow God to come in and, and let his word do the work. Once you go to the Lord in prayer, don't worry about anything. Just let him do all that he needs to do. At this time, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we come to you at this time. We just thank you for the many blessings that you have given us, dear God. It is a time like this, dear Heavenly Father, where we just want to thank you for all that you have done for us. Because, dear Heavenly Father, we are honest with ourselves some of us don't even deserve to be standing before you on this morning. But we are grateful that last night was not our last night. We are grateful that the four corners of our bed, it was not the four corners of our grave. Most of, most, most of all, dear Heavenly Father, we are able to stand on top of ground and not ground on top of us. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for giving us another day to get it right with you, dear God. For we don't know the day nor the hour you may call us. We want to use this time to make sure that we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, dear Heavenly Father. Doing everything that we can to do right by your word. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to pray for the households, for the families that may be watching us at this time, dear Heavenly Father. Give them strength. Give them guidance, dear Heavenly Father. Give them the hope that, they, that they've been missing, dear Heavenly Father. Many of us are going through some things, dear God, and, and we don't know which way to go. We at times felt like we wanted to give up, dear God, but I want the people to know that all their help comes from God. Look up to the hills where all your help comes from. And this time, dear Father, we want to pray for our young people. Pray for our parents, dear God. Pray, pray for those seniors, dear Heavenly Father, who, who may not have the opportunity to walk across the stage, but keep them encouraged, dear Heavenly Father. Have them to keep their heads up, dear Heavenly Father. Just let them know, dear God, that this is just a, a, a beginning for them, dear God. We want to come ask for prayers for our northbound family. Oh, what a day, dear God, when we are able to come back together as one to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And for all the praise is going to belong to you, dear God. Pray for that mother who wants to be, pray for that sister who wants to become a better mother. Pray for that father who wants to become a better father, a better husband, dear father. Pray for every person that may be here on this morning, the families where they may be, dear God. Dear God, we want to pray for our government officials. Give them the wisdom, dear God. Give them the strength, dear Heavenly Father. Give them that 
that, 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 that power that they would need him, Father, to, that you have instilled in them to watch over this nation, dear God. Pray for our church leaders and all leaders across this world, dear Heavenly Father. Pray for the churches, dear Heavenly Father. And if it's nothing else that we do, dear God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for what you've done. But most of all, thank you to him, Father, for the things that you are getting ready to do that we cannot see at this time. Dear God, we know that you have a plan for us. We're just asking for patience. We're asking for wisdom, dear God, that, that we are able to just keep still while you are doing what you're doing in the background. Now unto him who is able to do anything and everything but fail. May the Lord bless you, and may he bless you real good. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.